thanks for joining me for today's yoga practice, which is going to be all about the psoas muscles. The psoas muscles are deep inside your core and they're very important for helping you not only maintain physical balance between the joints of your lower body, but they also have implications energetically and fascia connections that run all the way up to the top of your head. Instead of trying to stretch the psoas or force it to have a really intense contraction, we're going to focus on really gently moving it. And I like to think about this practice as fluffing it up like a pillow. So we're hydrating the psoas, we're creating some suppleness there, and we're creating conditions in the body that will lead to emotional, energetic, and physical balance. So you'll want to be on a surface that's really soft. You can do this on a rug, on a carpet. If you're on a hard floor like mine, put a couple blankets underneath your body. You don't actually need a yoga mat to do somatic yoga, uh, but we do wanna make sure there's softness underneath the body. So what's really cool about somatic yoga is mostly it's done on the floor and this reduces your need to fight against gravity to hold yourself up you're free to completely relax and focus inward in a calm and relaxed way so we're going to start laying on the back and it's important for you to prop your head appropriately so if you lay on your back and we'll start with the knees bent and the feet flat on the floor if you feel like your chin is pointing up towards the ceiling like mine is now, it's a good idea to put a blanket or a small pillow underneath your head like this. Um, ideally, we want to be able to sense that the chin and the forehead are level with the floor. And you can test that by taking your hand, making an L, and then putting the thumb on the chin and the pointer finger on the forehead. And with that contact, you'll be a lot better able to judge whether those two points are creating a line that's parallel with the floor. Another little bit of alignment for the neck is that if you happen to have any neck injuries, bulging discs, stenosis, anterolisthesis, you can take the edge of your blanket and curl it up, creating a nice curve that's gonna support your neck in its natural curve. We don't want to let the neck go flat with these conditions. Um, it's better to always support a neutral curve of the neck if that's what's going on in your neck. So now I will invite you to just relax your arms onto the floor. Take a deep breath. Let it go slowly, either through the mouth or through the nose. Just feel the floor underneath you. Feel the weight of your body on the floor. Sense the bottoms of your feet touching the floor. Your sacrum, shoulder blades, and the back of your head. Sense that there's really some flatness and support here here on the floor. It's a wonderful reference point for us when we're learning about alignment of the spine. So next, we're gonna do a little before picture. We'll be doing an after picture later. And to do this, let's just put the feet out on the floor one at a time, nice and easy. And right away, I'm noticing my back is arching up off the floor. I really need this uh, back relaxation practice today. So, if that's what you're feeling too, just notice, right? Notice the level of tension or pinchiness or arching you're feeling in your back. And you could even take a hand and stick it under there. Just try to take a snapshot and remember how easy it is to get your hand under there, under the low back, how much space there is, okay? How much stretching you're feeling in the fronts of the hips, okay? And then we don't have to stay in this position any longer. We're bending the knees again, putting the feet flat on the floor into what we call constructive rest. So we want the feet to be in alignment with the knees and the hips. So if you were to stretch the leg out, theoretically, the ankle, knee, and hip would all be in a straight line. Or if you were looking at yourself from above, 
those three joints would all be aligned. And the toes are pointing at the bottom of the mat. And the feet are close enough to your body that you feel a relaxation of the low back. They're close enough, but they're not so close that your back is flat against the floor. We're looking for the Goldilocks zone here with our constructive rest. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is a really basic staple move in somatic yoga. It's called the arch and curl. And to do that, all you have to do is point your tailbone down towards the floor and you might feel your head kind of sliding or your chin coming down, that's fine. Let the head follow the movement. That's gonna help relax you even more. And then, so that's the arch portion of this arch and curl. And then if we flatten the back towards the floor, that's the curl. So we're arching and curling. And if you want to use your breath here, um, certainly it's a great idea to do that. It helps you relax even more. You can inhale as you're arching your back away from the floor and then exhale as you're lengthening your back towards the floor. Now, if the breathing isn't working for you, don't worry about it. Take what's useful, leave the rest behind. Okay. And check in, <laughs> check in with your glute muscles here. So a lot of the time when I'm teaching this in a class, I'll see people um, as they're lengthening their back towards the floor, they'll be pushing their feet into the floor and they'll be clenching their butt, or they might even be lifting up off the floor like this. Um, but that's not what we're doing. We're scaling it way back. So we don't have any need for the glute muscles. See if you can make this movement happening happen just by using the front and back muscles of your uh, torso. Okay, inhaling, arching the back away from the floor, and exhaling, <sighs> lengthening the back towards the floor. One of the ways to make sure your somatic yoga practice is as effective as it can be is to go slowly. We never rush these practices. It really does just take time to get the body to let go of the tension that it's holding on to. Remember, your body is holding on to tension for a good reason. Whether that's physical, as in the case of um, injuries or compensations, whether it's neurological or related to stress, it all takes time to let things go. So next I want to invite you to try adding a little upper body element to this. So as you're tilting your pelvis away from you, tailbone comes towards the floor and you're inhaling, there's a little bit of contraction in the low back there. Feel the way your chin comes down towards your collarbones and press your shoulders into the floor. And then as you tilt the pelvis back, eventually the shoulders relax up off the floor. Tilt the pelvis forward, then the shoulders into the floor, relax the pelvis, relax the shoulders. So this becomes like a wave. And if you're a visual person, you can imagine in your mind, visualize a wave traveling up your spine all the way into your shoulders. So your whole body is kind of undulating here. And if you're more of a sensory kind of person, see if you can feel the wave going up from the tailbone all the way up to the base of the skull as your spine becomes the waves of the ocean. If you're an auditory person, you can imagine the sound of the ocean, the sound of waves. And 
after a few more rounds, when you're ready, we can come to a rest and see if you can notice a residual sensation of movement, a residual wave kind of going through your torso, even though you're not really moving anymore. So that was the arch and curl movement. And I also like to call that one rocking. So if that was rocking, the next one will be rolling. We're gonna rock and roll. We can take the feet a little bit wider, maybe about as wide as a yoga mat. The ankles will be a little bit wider than the hips here. Okay, and so we're taking that up and down movement, we're gonna make it into a side to side movement. Take a breath and as you exhale, press your right foot down into the floor just enough, just barely enough to lift the right side of your pelvis so you'll feel your right butt cheek coming up off the floor. And then as you exhale, lower it back down. And as you inhale, press the left foot into the mat and then lift your left side, the left side of your butt up off the floor. Exhaling, put that down. Again, we want to go slow. We also want to make these movements small. When we go slow and when we make our movements really small, we have a distinct opportunity to notice the smallest things possible. And this is how we increase our sensitivity to fluctuations of energy, fluctuations of mus muscle tension and um, neurological activation. Being able to observe these things is very useful in day-to-day -day life if you're trying to, for example, maintain composure through difficult situations. Or if you're just trying to <laughs> relieve chronic stress. So pay attention to which butt cheek is engaging, right? If we're lifting the left side, it should be the left glutes that are contracting, but really only like 20 or 30% of their maximum. Remember, we're trying to soften the body here. And sometimes people will notice that both cheeks um, engage simultaneously and they have a really hard time doing it independently of each other. And so if that's happening for you, just notice do your best to separate them out, but also know that this isn't all going to happen in one day, right? We just accept what's present without judging it and being open to change later. So if we wanted to add an upper body element to this rolling, we could uh, press the shoulder into the floor. So if you're lifting your left side of your pelvis, you could press the left shoulder down into the floor and feel the shoulder blade muscles engaging there. Exhaling, we'll walk through the center. Inhaling, lifting the right side and pressing the right shoulder blade into the floor. And the object here is just to get some pressure going across the body diagonally. So we have pressure, for example, going into the left butt cheek as it's pressed against the floor and the right one is lifted, but we also have pressure going into the right shoulder at the same time. We don't need to really arch the low back. The low back isn't really doing anything. It's kind of along for the ride, which is beautiful because it gives those vertebrae a chance to articulate loosely. They're fully supported by the muscles above them and below them. Last one here. Okay. So if you ever do this on your own, you're free to do it as long as you like, really. There's, you're never going to do too much of this kind of work. 
In fact, if you have a really high degree of chronic tightness, for example, in the glutes, uh, this could feel like a nice massage, a really gentle massage that you could keep doing um, for quite a long time, just gently working those tissues, trying to get them to soften up. So now we're moving on to the clock face movement. And before we do that, I want to give you some context, something to, to guide you through. So if you imagine your, t your, your body, your lower body from the waist down to the tailbone as a clock, we're going to call the tailbone six o'clock and we're going to call the belly button 12 o'clock. So that means that the right hip is nine o'clock and the left hip is three o'clock. So when we did the arch and curl, we were going from 12 to six. When we did the side to side, the, um, the rolling, that was three and nine. We're gonna start at 12 and go around to nine and down to six and up to three. So we're just gonna be rocking around the clock with the pelvis. And we'll start by taking a breath. On the exhale, lengthen your back towards the floor, pulling the belly button down. And then rocking or rolling over to nine o'clock, the left hip. Arching over to six o'clock, the tailbone over to three o'clock, the right side, and back on the exhale to 12 o'clock. You'll notice the glutes alternately contracting and relaxing depending on which side is up. And as we go around from three from the right side, to 12 to the belly button we want to be exhaling that's going to be helping you engage a little bit more of your abdominal muscles and then as we wrap around nine and six we want to be inhaling as we arch the back away from the floor and exhaling as we flatten the back towards the floor now if you want to add a pelvic floor movement with this you could be Inhaling, stretching the pelvic floor here as we arch away from the floor at six o'clock. And then as you exhale, coming around three to 12, pulling the belly button in, that would be the time when you would pull up the pelvic floor, pulling up the genitals, pulling up the anus, inhaling, relaxing that. So we are using the pelvic floor and the abdominal muscles at the same time to move the pelvis and hopefully we don't have to use the glutes too much, really just maybe the tiniest little bit if you wanna get extra lift. But here's a little experiment you can try. See if you can make this movement happen only using your pelvic floor muscles and your abdominal muscles. And when you do that, the movement's gonna get a lot smaller. So notice that, and that's okay smaller muscles, fewer muscles, smaller movement, more subtlety. A lot of my clients really struggle with this one. It's, it's hard to isolate these muscles at first, but once you get the hang of it, uh, it seems to stay, it doesn't go away. All right, so then we'll stop just for a moment really briefly and then we're going to go in the opposite direction but I want you to just kind of relax before we do that <sighs> a little sacred pause here reflecting on if there's any sensation that you can perceive anywhere in the body even though you're in stillness and when you're ready we'll go back into movement in the opposite direction so let's inhale point the tailbone down and then we can rock over to the left side nine o'clock up to 12 o'clock exhaling here 
inhaling over to the right. Exhaling to bring the belly button in and the pelvic floor up. And what I'm noticing right now is see, I have a lot of tension in my glutes today. And so this feels exquisite, just rolling the glute muscles against the floor. It's a really, really subtle, gentle massage, and that is the best way to relax chronically tight muscles. Remember, it takes time. So I want to point out that sometimes people do find some jerkiness through portions of this movement or perhaps even all of this movement, or maybe even just in one direction. That's normal too. That's definitely indication that there might be something happening in that part of the body that you'll want to use this practice again and again to smooth that out. Smoothing out the wrinkles. Okay, just about two more circles here. And relax. Feel into your body from the tailbone all the way up to the base of the skull. Notice what your breath is doing. There's a chance the breath might be softer, easier than it was before. Maybe, maybe not, just notice. And then we're going to put the legs out again for our after shot, our after photo. So one leg at a time, nice and slow here. We're never in a rush in somatic yoga. So we're gonna let the legs rest. Before we put the hands under the back, just notice the amount of stretching sensation you feel in the fronts of the hips. And then notice the sensation in the back. Maybe there was some pinchiness before. If there was, is that the same, less, or more? And then we can put the hands under the back just to see. Yeah. I definitely feel like my back is flatter now. We don't have to stay in this position any longer. We're bending the knees again, putting the feet flat on the floor. Inhale, arch your back away from the floor, pointing the tailbone down towards the floor. Notice if your chin wants to follow uh, chin pointing down as the tailbone points down. Let your head follow if it wants to. As you exhale, point the tailbone up towards the sky as the low back lengthens towards the floor. And maybe the chin slides up a little. Inhale, arching the back. Feel the compression, the engagement of the muscles there in the low back. And as you exhale, you feel them relax as they lengthen towards the floor. So there's a dance here between tension and release. Tension happening when we contract the muscles and then release happening as we lengthen the muscles. And that also happens in the front of the body. You can notice as you're inhaling and arching your back away from the floor, the front body lengthens out, stretches out just a little. And as you exhale, the front body shrinks a little you might even have a little bit of contraction in the belly muscles there. Inhaling and exhaling. So on the next exhale, we're going to bring the left knee 
in towards the chest. Don't use your hands. We don't need the hands here. We're going to pull the back, um, the top of the foot towards the shin. So the foot is flexed, the ankle is flexed. And we're, we're actually squeezing that knee in towards the body here. Using the psoas muscle itself. And you can feel that in the front of the hip. And then on the inhale, we'll put the foot down, arch the back. And exhale, lengthen the back. We're using our arch and curl between the movements. So we move the psoas, and then we arch and curl. And this way we're going to go about fluffing it up like a pillow, hydrating it, turning that psoas muscle from beef jerky into filet mignon. So on the next exhale, we're pulling the knee in again. And then you can hold here briefly. If you're holding, you can make sure you're still breathing. We never want to hold the breath while we're doing somatic yoga. And then on, that, on an inhale, we'll put the foot down, arch and curl. One more arch and exhaling, pulling the knee in. To get the psoas muscles to relax, we really need to take it slow. These muscles, uh, when they're healthy and supple, that indicates a sense of uh, softness overall in the entire body, a sense of not being rushed. I mean, think about what happens when you're in a rush. The body tenses, right? The shoulders get tight. And exhale, bring the knee in. And this time, as you inhale and put the foot down, you can slide your heel all the way out on the floor. Arch and curl. Exhaling, we'll slide the heel up, pull the knee in. And you can keep just moving the leg like that. Or if it's comfortable for your neck, you can lift your head and shoulders and maybe even reach through your hands for the bottom of the mat. And when we're doing this, we're really shrinking up the entire left side of that body. Still breathing. And we'll put the heel down on the floor, put the head down. And this time, if it's comfortable for your shoulder, you can bring that left arm up overhead. And if you can't quite reach all the way overhead and relax there. Just move your arm as low as you need to so that you can relax and let it just be um, effortless on the floor. Let it be heavy on the floor. And we're arching and curling here. Inhaling to arch and exhaling to curl. Check in with that left leg. Make sure it's totally relaxed. That means for a lot of us, the toes will be flopping out to the side. And with the leg stretched out like this, as we arch and curl, what do you feel? How is this different? Exhaling, we'll bring the knee in. We'll curl up. Making sure the top part of the foot is still curled up towards the shin. Put the heel down, lengthen the body out. And something I like to add to this is just the tiniest little glute engagement on the curl as you're flattening your back towards the floor. If you engage the glute only 10% of its maximum, you'll feel increased stretch in the front of that hip. Arching and curling. It's like we're flossing the psoas muscle where it runs there across the front of the pelvis and down into the thigh. Exhaling, we'll bring the knee up, curling all the way up. So in this position, the psoas is as short as it can possibly be. It begins all the way at the top of your lumbar, 
for some people, even a little bit higher. It originates, muscle fibers originating from every single lumbar vertebrae, all joining together into one thick rope about as big as your fist, stretching out on the floor here, arching and curling. And so when all those fibers get together, they run down the front of your hip and attach at the very top of your inner thigh. It's a really long, really large muscle, really deep in there. It's behind your guts. And having that visual, I hope, is going to help you um, relax even more. I really am a firm believer that um, when people have a really strong understanding of what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what the parts of their body are doing, curling up here, crunching, um, then they're a lot more likely to have a good result from their efforts. Okay. So last time we're gonna stretch out the body. We're still um, arch and curling here, making sure that left leg is relaxed, moving with the breath if that feels good for you. If not, you don't have to. Don't worry about it. Good. And then we're going to relax. You can bring that left arm down. Stretch the right leg out next to the left leg. And this is a magical moment. You get to pause in the middle of your yoga practice. I invite you to observe if there's any difference between the right side and the left side. Maybe a difference in sensation. Does something feel higher, lower, bigger, smaller, softer, harder? Compare the fronts of the hips. Compare the low back, the left and right sides of the low back. And then when you're ready, we'll move on to the right leg. So we'll bring one at a time, each foot onto the floor into our constructive rest. Okay. And we'll arch and curl a few times. We always start there. Sometimes I like to be quiet in the middle of my classes so that my students can just focus on themselves. So as you're exhaling, lengthening the low back towards the floor, please lift your right knee, bring it in towards your chest, no hands. Pull the back of the right foot up towards the shin. And Right away, I'm noticing this side feels crunchier, feels mm, pinchier. So my body's going to really appreciate this. We're going to put that heel and foot down on the floor, arch and curl. Exhaling, we'll bring the knee in again. And putting the foot down, we can arch and curl a little bit more. Bring the knee in again, right knee. Make sure that knee is aligning towards the nipple line. So we don't want to see the knees going out towards the armpit when we bring them in. We're kind of bypassing 
the psoas when we do that. And um, actually that is a, a one sign of really tight hip flexors is when people have to put their knee out to the side to bring it up. So it, you know, just remember it's not important to, you know, how close you can get that knee. It's important the muscles that you're using. Okay, so we're gonna put that foot down and slide the heel out. Arch and curl. And when we put those legs down, it's important to slide the heel, put the heel down first and then slide it out. We don't wanna extend the leg out and then lower it. We don't wanna use any of the leg muscles here. We're just focusing on the deep core and getting those nerves to soften, to create an inner landscape of ease. Okay. Slide the heel up, bring the knee in, and this time, if you like, you can curl. Just like we did on the other side. So think of something that makes you feel ease or feel lack of tension. Um, what I noticed yesterday, I had this really amazing afternoon in this moment where I realized um, it's the spring. Spring really does it for me. I feel so much relief when I can let my skin be out in the open air. We're going to put that foot down, stretch the leg out, and if you like, you can bring your arm up overhead. Keep arching and curling here with the breath if that's comfortable for you. <sighs> yeah, so as I'm doing this, I'm just remembering what that felt like the warm sun on my skin, the soft breeze. We're in that magical part of the year where the temperature is just right. It's not hot yet and it's not cold anymore. And there's just this sense of um, a weight being removed when nature feels that good to the body. So whatever kind of experience of ease you've ever had, bring that into this practice. Bringing the knee in, curling up, maybe even reaching. Remember, if this hurts your neck, you really can skip this part. You're free to skip, change, or do something completely different. Your body, your choice. And we're gonna put the foot down. Stretch the leg out, arm overhead again. Arching and curling. And the leg, that right leg should be soft. Also check in with the left leg. We didn't do this on the other side, but it's always important to make sure that the side you're not working is quiet until that left leg, you get a break, you get a holiday here. Sometimes, one side of the body tries to do all the work. Um, and we do see that coming out in this, in this movement. So just pay attention, be aware of that. We're gonna exhale and bring the knee in again. stretching out again arm overhead arching and curling Last one, we're gonna bring, slide the heel up, bring the knee in, shrinking up the right side of the body. Five, four, three, two, one. 
heel comes down, lengthen the leg out. Lengthen out that entire right side. You might even notice some stretching in the lats here. Lats are definitely connected to low back and the psoas. Now, something to remember, once you memorize this sequence, you can do it on your own without the video. You're also free to speed it up if you like. Some days I, I do just kind of move through this a little more quickly than I am now. But other days I want to go slow and I really do take this long. So it's up to you how you're feeling. And if you're not sure, just try something. Try one, you know, um, and observe, right? And you can always change it if you think you want a different result from what you're getting. Okay, so we're going to relax the right arm down. We're going to relax the left leg down onto the floor. Another magical moment where we get to pause and taking our final after picture here. The, the end result, the finished product for today. Of course, we're observing differences, if there are any, between left and right, the front of the hips, the low back. We're doing a before and after. Um, has there been any change? And the sensations in the back. Um. <laughs> Hi, Shambo. Come here, baby. Good boy. Lay down. Thank you. And hopefully, if you have a furry baby, they'll come and give you some love, too. This is the best part of yoga. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for joining me for yoga. Hmm. Let's send out a little loving kindness into the universe for the benefit of all beings everywhere. May all beings everywhere be happy, peaceful, free from the causes of their suffering, including me, including you. May all people on this planet have access to everything they need to thrive and be happy because they deserve it just as much as I do. I bow to the light in you because it's the same as the light in me. Namaste.